Konnichiwa Nakamai, I'm your host, Locum23. You're joining me for Choices of the Stories You Play. Crown in the Flame, Book 3, Chapter 17, The Fond Farewell. Now playing as Kenna. It's the day of your royal wedding, and you're running late. Hurrying up the stairs to your room, you burst through the door. There you are. I was starting to think you'd run off. I'm sorry, busy day. Well, never mind that. We've got to get you dressed. Annalise gestures to your bed, where she's laid out a beautiful, shimmering gown. The royal dressmakers and I have been working day and night, using our finest Aurelian lace, of course. You run your hand along the shining fabric. Annalise, it's gorgeous. Only trying to do you justice, my dear. Now, let's see how it looks on you. Huh. Hmm. You would think Pixelberry would at least give one thing back, since it's the finale. Victory gown! The crown looks awkward, though. Wow, they have Photoshop on that sucker. And look, I like how the crown is better, too. Like, they just don't make you an edited crown because you... Okay, anyway. It's not bad, 25. So we have a choice between blue dress and my armor. I'm going to go with armor just in case. I'll stick to this. Annalise laughs fondly, rolling her eyes. The social events of a lifetime and Quinn arise at tins and full armor. Well, I can't say I'm surprised. Now run along and come say hello a little later when you're not running late to your own ce celebration. I will thank you, Annalise. Annalise laughs as you hurry out the door. Down the hall. And to the throne room where you arrive out of breath. Throughout the hall, your allies mingle cheerfully amidst rows of benches. Cutting it awfully close, aren't you? You know, I always like a challenge. Well, it looks like we've still got a few minutes before the ceremony. Go and mingle. Might settle your nerves. I will. Thank you, Jackson. You head into the crowd. Ah, many people. Many voices. Let's go with our newest ally, Leah. You make your way towards a group of nervous-looking Iron Empire guards surrounding a familiar face. Good morning, Your Majesty. Good morning, Your Radiance. Not far away, Joran grips his spears, eyes flicking suspiciously towards every passing guest. Joran... Please relax. This war is over. With all due respect, that does not mean the danger has passed. I look forward to the mending of bridges between our kingdoms, but there are many on both sides who will nurse grudges for years to come. Whether here or in Moriasi, the spear will never leave my hands, and I will never leave your side. Leah, Adorn is being overly protective, and you'd better get used to it. Now that you're a ruler, you'll have no shortage of loyal guardians ready to die for you. Just as mine did. Try not to give yours the chance. Leah swallows, nodding fiercely. Y yes your majesty thank you for the advice. I shall take it to heart. You lean in to give Leah a hug. Joran watches you carefully, gives a small nod of respect. Take care of yourself, Leah. I think you'll make a fine leader, and I look forward to becoming your friend. I'd like that. Ah, next. Let's get the bitch out of the way! <laughs> you make your way towards a cluster of Naragish soldiers and find Zeno, who greets you with guarded expression. Can I? Zeno. So I guess we should address the dragon in the room. Whatever do you mean? 
Zeno, come now. You know what she means. Father. Zeno sighs. Look, I'll be honest, I'm not at all broken up about it. I love my father, but I didn't like him. Zeno holds up her hands, palms flat, like a pair of scales, weighing the air she speaks. He killed your mother and invaded your kingdom. So you conquered his kingdom and took him prisoner. You needed his help, and he agreed. Then he betrayed you, so you killed him. She drops her hands with a shrug. As far as I'm concerned, it all balances out. So, if you're expecting some kind of blood feud, I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint you, dear. I just don't have the time. Wow. Sino, that's mature of you. Well, don't sound so surprised. Zeno picks a hair off her sleeve, smiling. Frankly, I'm just glad this stupid war is over, and I can finally get back to ruling and shopping. You hear a scoff and turn to find Adder. Ruling over Abanthus? You can't possibly think that's going to happen after everything your family has done. But... But Kenna said she would give us back our freedom. Freedom, not ruling. Yes, your freedom, not your power. And who else is going to run things? You? Yes, as a matter of fact. You must be joking. And why not? The Black Ass have basically been running like us for years. Oh, please! You think the whole country is going to bow to some order of spies? You have a revolution inside a month. Zeno turns to Divios. Divios, tell her she can't rule our people. Don't drag me into this. Especially because he was an expendable character who really much is not plot-worthy anymore. For some. You don't even care that she's talking about taking away our kingdom? I didn't say that. And I also can't say I don't mind a vacation after an entire life at war. Besides, she certainly can't do a worse job than father. Well then, it looks like it's up to me. The rule of Atlantis will go to... So we have a choice. We have a choice between Nebraracus, we have a choice between the Black Asps, and we have a choice between both, which would be very diplomatic, if I don't say so myself. Okay, so... Both. What? You can't be serious. My mother used to say that a successful compromise is one that ends with neither party satisfied. Hmm. That's stupid. How are we supposed to share rule? How about I control the coin, taxes, trade, and affairs of state, and you handle everything else? Wait. Seriously? Do you have a problem with that? Are you joking? Everything you listed is boring. The other stuff is parades, tournaments, balls. They're what make ruling fun. I get to lead the army, right? No offense, but the thought of either of these schemers directly directing troops is a bit terrifying. It depends. Think you can manage to not invade anyone for a while? Trust me, I've had more than my fill of invasions. At her laughs. Well, Kenna, I have to say, if we're judging by your mother's standards, then this seems to be a very unsuccessful compromise. It seems so. Who will you talk to next? Abbot Arian. Now, near a cluster of purple-clad troops, you find Arian. Hello, Queen Arian. Hello, Queen Kenna. It's nice to finally meet you. I hope you weren't treated too harshly as Azura's prisoner. 
No, in fact, it was quite an educational experience to be held prisoner in Fidoria's own dungeons. That's an optimistic perspective. It's an optimistic occasion. How the f is being held prisoner an optimistic What? Arian smiles at the bustling crowd of your friends and allies. Look at this. Knights, kings, queens, warriors, common folk, dragons. The five kingdoms are finally coming together. Which reminds me, I have a gift for you. Will it cost diamonds? Oh, what's that? Simply this. A promise. Arian smooths her dress, choosing her words carefully. Save for our recent brush with the Zura, Fridori has been quite fortunate in this war, all things considered, and we are well aware that this fact is only true because our allies, like Stormhold, have paid for peace and tears and blood. Arian lifts her head, looks you in the eye, and extends her hand. So you have my promise. In the years to come, Fidoria will do its utmost to ensure the alliance of the Five Kingdoms is strong. Hmm. And the life's work of your mother shall never again be undone. Thank you, Oren. That's a wonderful gift. I'll treasure it. Oren beams proudly as you shake her hand. But see, the question is, is if everyone else is doing everything, what makes it the point? What makes the point of a king or a queen? Think about it. To rule over people to collect taxes. Back then, taxes went to what? The military and, and things like that. But that was pretty much it. Rarely did it give back to the people. You know? There wasn't a king who stood there and said, You know, we should really improve the providence over here at, at uh, B. That's uh, living in, in shambles and shacks. Kings were like, you know what, let's throw a ball, let's throw a feast, let's throw a war, let's do this, we need more land. Yeah, I mean, you know. Uh, I digress. Um, let us end with Sai, so I'll go with Whitlock. You find Whitlock chatting with a few co or crew of workers. The workers take their leave as you approach. Whitlock turns towards you. Good morning, Kina. Good morning, Whitlock. Were those Stormholt Masons I saw you chatting with just now? Yes, and carpenters from the Penrion. I've been helping them draw blueprints for the wall repairs before I go. I suppose you're heading back to the Foundry after the ceremony? Yes, it's been fun running around like a storybook hero with you. But I'm afraid the technos technocrats have a lot of rebuilding to do. Let me know if there's anything Stormholt can do to assist. Thank you, but I think we'll manage. We are a city of builders, after all. What about Hex? I'm afraid that's not up to me. Hex has a lot of crimes to answer for. She'll stand trial before the tri Technocrat Tribunal. That said, you are Queen. Not to mention the one who captured Hex, you have grounds to submit a sentencing recommendation. Sai has already offered one on behalf of the fire users. Would you like to offer one on behalf of Stormhold? Hmm. I thought Hex would be left in the dungeons, honestly. Um... Looking back on what Hex has done. I mean, she tried to do it for the good of the people. Failed. Like I said originally when I had this decision come across me, is some people do things in the best intentions, but it turns out badly. The problem is, is they don't have foresight. So... I mean, she did pr imprison Dom. She imprisoned the other fire user. She tried to kill the fire users. <laughs> I'm sure that, uh... <sighs> Damn. Most no way, it's his mother. Well, she took him in, but... Um, I'm gonna go with Have Mercy. X has hurt a lot of people. 
but I've seen the way she looks to you for guidance, unlike Luther. I think she truly wants to change. Willock smiles visibly, sagging with relief. I think so too. I'm glad you agree. Willock holds out his hand. Take care of yourself, leader of the technocrats. You as well, Queen of Stormholt. You solemnly shake Whitlock's hand, then break out grinning and sweep him up into a hug. Ha ha ha! All right, all right. You're embarrassing me in front of the other rulers. You'd better get used to it now. I'll be doing it for the rest of your life. And finally, Sai! Sai stands by the windows, steadying the stained glass. Enjoying the new artwork? I'm surprised they were rebuilt while your walls are still shambles. I will never understand the priorities lowlanders place on material things. So are you sticking around after the ceremony? I will drink and dance tonight, yes, but tomorrow I return to the dragon spine. I can't imagine you returning to a peaceful village life after all this. I won't be. I'm returning to lead. It's time our people come down from the mountains and remind the world we still exist. Should I start calling you Queen Sai? Absolutely not. You laugh, drawing Sai into a hug. She stiffens for a moment, then sighs and embraces you tightly. I will miss you, Queen of Stormhold. Don't be a stranger. From outside, you hear the rising clamor of bells ringing cheerfully atop the castle walls. Attention, everyone! The ceremony is beginning shortly. As your friends and allies find their seats, you make your way toward the doors, where Jackson awaits. Are you ready for this? I should say, I'm nervous. I was born ready. Jackson's eyes glint with pride. That's the spirit, your majesty. Shall we? As chatter dies down to a low murmur, Jackson takes her arm and escorts you towards the dais. I'm sorry your mother couldn't be here for this. Or Gabriel, or Leon, or... You pat his hand. They are here, Jackson. Yes. Yes, I suppose they are. Oh, Hales, I promised myself I, I wouldn't cry. Jackson lifts his head high and proud to hide the tears in his eyes as you climb the dais and turn to face the assembly. He composes himself and booms out over the audience. I present the hero of five kingdoms, her royal majesty queen can arise of Stormholt. Lo, may she reign. And her betrothed. Jackson gives the signal. The assembly turns in their seats as the doors begin to crack open. And a line of light spills across the floor, revealing... King Dom! <laughs> King Dominic of Stormholt! The muttering crowd is immediately drowned out by the echoing cheers of Stormholt soldiers lining the walls. Glowing in the sunlight, Dom strides down the aisle, ascends a dais, and stands at your side. Hi there. Hi yourself. I think I'm going to faint. Nervous? No! You're just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Jackson clears his throat. <clears> throat> We gather here to join these two souls in sacred covenant and pay witness to their vows. Dominic, your vows? Dominic takes your hand in his, smiling. I have loved you, can arise, since I was six years old. Growing up, you were the center of my world, and everyone knew it. And I can't tell you the number of times I heard, Dominic, give it up! You're not good enough for her. It's taken me a long time to realize they were right. I wasn't good enough for you. Tom squeezes your hand. I was a brash, cocky, stable hand with nothing. No family, 
no friends. You were this powerful princess surrounded by nobles with everything in front of you, and I felt like I'd never be enough. But sometimes I look at you, and I catch my own reflection in your eyes, and I see this other person. You notice tears starting to well in Dom's eyes. And he's right here, there. Within my reach, like a suit of shining armor, I could step right into. I guess what I'm trying to say is, you make me a better man. The audience melts with awes and sighs. Psst, Jackson, are they crying? Did, did I make anyone cry? Hush! Jackson turns to you. Kenna, your vows? Dom, the past few years have been a whirlwind containing some of the brightest and darkest moments of my life. But you were always there with me, the light at the end of a very long tunnel. You make me feel... Hmm. Strong. Safe. Shit! <sighs> you know what? I'm gonna answer it as if I was giving these vows. How about that? Like I could build castles, tear down conquerors, move mountains, and change the world. And I can't wait to start a family with you, share more adventures with you. The war may be over, but I don't intend to sit around a castle all day. I can't wait to see what trouble we'll get in together. The crowd sighs. Beautiful, both of you. Now then, is there anyone who objects to this union? Jackson suits a glare around the room, hand on his sword, daring anyone to make a sound. No? Good. Then I pronounce this blessed covenant sealed with a kiss. You lift your gaze into the eyes of your beloved. We should kiss politely? Like no one is watching because we haven't kissed in a long time. Come here. You pull Dom towards you, bodies and lips pressed passionately together as a room erupts in applause. I love you. I love you too. You married the love of your life. Raising your clasped hands, you turn to face the cheering assembly as the doors open and the celebration begins. Outside, the ravaged landscape comes to life with drinking, dancing, games, music, parades, and more. The hours fly by, and amidst the celebration, you bump into some familiar faces. Ah! <sighs> Let's go with Kai. Kai and the other fighters from Panrion are taking turns throwing hatchets into the wooden beams of a broken catapult. Well, if it ain't the lady of the hour. Having fun? Always. Kai chuckle, chucks her hatchet into the beam with a solid thunk, then turns to chat. I heard some of your carpenters are staying behind to help with the repairs to the walls. I wanted to thank you for that. Thank them! They're staying on their own accord. Me, I'm heading back to Panrion. Lots to do. Speaking of Panrion, what's next for you all? Getting richer than self-selling during jelly season. Come again? Well, now that Azura's gone, there's a whole new world that just opened up for trading, and it just so happens there's an ocean between us. That means ships are going to be on high demand, and that means Panrion's about to become the busiest shipyard in the world. I see. I don't suppose there's any chance of Stormholt getting a discount? Stormholt? Nah, wouldn't be fair to the other kingdoms. But for my good friend Kenna, sure, I think we could work something out. Okay. Jackson. 
Jackson is leaning on a broken bit of wall by the gate when you find him. Your Majesty, you enjoying the festivities? It's all wonderful, Jackson. And the ceremony was beautiful. Thank you for officiating it. Happy to do it. Congratulations to both of you. You stand together and look out over the blasted landscape. You can almost forget there was a battle here just a week ago. And in a few months, you won't be able to tell it all. You think so? I know so. After all, this will be... what? The sixth time we've rebuilt Stormhold? We're getting pretty good at it. By the way, Jackson, I wanted to say... Thank you for your loyal service. Your friendship. Hmm. I'm gonna go friendship. You're a loyal soldier and a brave knight, but you're also more than that. You're a good person, and I treasure the fact that I can call you my friend. Jackson's eyes shine with pride. Thank you, Kenna. That means the world to me. Ah, finally, down to three. Let's go with Annalise. Join Annalise at a long picnic table where she's watching the dancers. Can a tear take a seat? Shall I pour you a glass of wine and toast to your victory? Please, no. I've had so many victory toasts this afternoon, my head is swimming. You'll have to learn to pace yourself better at parties now that the war is over. Annalise lifts her wine glass, taking a tiny sip, and winks at you. So I suppose you'll be heading back to Aurelia soon? And Elisa sighs wistfully, setting down her glass. Yes, I'm afraid so. We've got quite a lot of work to do. I still remember the first time I came to that city. Yes, I seem to recall a desperate traveler claiming to be a queen. Your guards almost turned me away. Imagine where we would be now if they had. Emily shudders. Perish the thought. I think we'll be revisiting our closed gate policy soon, among others. Oh? Yes. Aurelia spent too long drinking and dancing and idling away, hidden from the world. Time to change that, I think. After all, someone's going to have to pay to rebuild the Five Kingdoms. Might as well step up before more desperate travelers come calling. Speaking of which, I happen to have a castle in need of some minor renovations. You and Emily share a laugh, then spend a few minutes enjoying the show and the warm afternoon. Ah, down to two. Times like this, I kind of wish I was live streaming so people could go, No! Oh, Phil! Phil next! Raiden! I need Raiden! Let's go with Val. When you find Val, she's collecting her winnings from a game of flinch with two Stormhold soldiers. Ah, hells. I told you this was a dumb idea! Hey, don't sell yourself short. You almost had me that time. Maybe if you just put a few more coins and try again. And here I thought we'd finally civilized you. Foul snorts as you approach. Fat chance of that. You join her at a nearby table where she pours herself a drink. And speaking of drink... As she sets down her mug, she grimaces. How are your injuries? I'm fine. On the table, her hand is locked in a fist. When she notices your concerned expression, she takes her hand off the table, massaging it. I'll be fine. Healers say it's nerves from the shock. Should mend in a few months, and then I'll be back to fighting shape. No worse for wear. So guess you're here to say goodbye, eh? Am I going somewhere? No, but I am. War's over, so it's back to mercenary life for old Val. Muddy camps, arm wrestling for ale, and all that. I 
think I have a better idea if you'd hear it out. I'm listening. Val, how would you like to become my master at arms? Depends. What does that mean? Uh, pretty much you, uh, you get to beat people up, train them, and, uh, drink all the shit you want. <laughs> it means you'd be in charge of training all of Stormholt's guards and soldiers. Oh, me? Teaching knights and rich kids a bunch of fancy pants footwork so they can go win fancy pants tournaments? You can teach whoever you want, however you want. I'm gonna go with that. Wait, seriously? You give me a whole castle armory and servants and whatever, and I could just do whatever I want? Yes. Could... I throw away this footwork and teach her knights to fight dirty? Sure. Could I make them muck the stables and tell them it's part of the training? <laughs> Any fool who would question the methods of the great Master Greaves obviously hasn't seen her fight. Val sits back, grinning. Well, hells, you drive a hard bargain. All right, then. I accept. Val lifts her drink and salute, and knocks it back with one swig. Master Greaves, I like the sound of that. And finally, Raiden! You find Raiden sitting alone on the hillside, looking out over the celebration. Am I interrupting your brooding? Not at all. I'm in fine spirits, but I have been meaning to talk with you about something. He pats the grass beside him, and you said, I suppose this is the part where you say goodbye and tell me you're returning to Aurelia? A reasonable assumption. Aurelia is still in ruin, and there's a great deal of work to be done. However, I've spoken to Annalise on the subject, and we're in agreement. Agreement on one? my tenants would be more use here as Stormhold's spymaster. What about... Hmm. What about Annalise? Raiden smiles. There was a time when Annalise needed my help to navigate the Golden City of Whispers. She was young, new to power, and the subtle art of wielding it. But that time has passed now. Annalise can handle herself. Oh, and I can't? Raiden laughs. <laughs> Not what I meant. A stormhold will be a great kingdom soon, and be great, and the great kingdoms attract schemers like termites. Let someone else worry about keeping your pests under control so you can focus on ruling and living. And what about you? If you're busy working all the time, when will you start living? My life is my work. Oh, for the love of God, I'm Raiden. <laughs> that sounds like a very clever excuse. It's not an excuse, it's... Raiden is interrupted by the sound of footsteps. You turn to find Arn nervously approaching. Uh, hello, Kenna? Uh, Raiden? Oh, good evening, Arn. I... is there something I can help you with? I... no. Well, y yes. Y you see, I noticed that uh, there are, uh... That is to say, people are dancing, and I was wondering if, uh... He'd love to. Raiden starts to object, then catches your expression, and stops himself with a laugh. Yes. I would love to. He stands, dusts himself off, and gallantly bows. Arin, may I have this dance? Arin's face flushes. Y y yes, please, I would like that very much. Raiden and Arin link arms and head off towards the music. As the day wears on, you duck away from the festivities. And where do you think you're going? I was wondering where she was going to be! Rowan, I was just uh, stepping away for a few moments to catch my breath. 
you wouldn't have an enemy avoiding a certain tedious negotiation on taxes and trade routes with a certain ruler of Thorngate? Of course not. Good. Then we can talk it over a hunt. Say first thing tomorrow. You're a prick! Gods, you're ruthless. Just wait until the negotiations begin. You make your way across the courtyard when a distinctive whistle catches your ear. Hey, up here. King Dom. Boy, that name. There you are. You make your way up the stairs and join Dom on the ramparts. I was wondering where you had gotten to, sneaking away from your own royal feast? In my defense, so are you. Fair enough. You stand side by side, leaning on the wall, looking out over the lands of Stormhold. I can't believe it's finally over. It doesn't feel real yet. I know what you mean. I keep waiting for the next explosion. Some new bad guy. Oh my god, Val's been kidnapped! Grab the horses! We're going after her! <laughs> In the distance, the sun is beginning to set. I wonder if this is what the end of the story feels like. Maybe. But I don't think any story ever really ends. It just... changes. You think? Well, look at how your stories change. Princess, to exile, to conquer, to queen. And yours. Castle servant, to saboteur, to mythical hero, to king. I wonder what comes next. Actually, I've been meaning to talk to you about them. Dom runs a hand through his hair, eyes shining in the evening light. What is it? Well, I've been thinking about the kind of king I want to be, what's important to me, and who I can help. Have you talked to Sai? Did she tell you what comes next for the Fire Tribes? Yes, she said they're coming down out of the mountains. Well, I've been thinking about that, and I think it's going to be more complicated than she's imagining. I should say you're probably right. Well, that's right. They are. They are. I mean, they kind of like uh, cordoned off themselves for the rest of the world. So yeah, probably right. We'll have to rewrite the maps and add a sixth kingdom and a whole new people who can shoot fire from their hands and turn into dragons. There's going to be friction. Lands, food, resources. The tribes are going to need someone to advocate for them. So you want to become what? Some kind of ambassador? That's the word I've been trying to think of all week. Yes, an ambassador. Sounds like you'll be traveling away from Stormhold a lot. Maybe every now and then, but I'll always come home, and you can always come with me. A summer home in the Black Spines, huh? Now you're talking. Well, I think it's a good idea. Yeah? Yeah. You lean in and plant a kiss on Dom's lips. And that reminds me of another thing. Can I, how much do you know about the spirit world? Based on what you've told me, it sounds beautiful, it sounds strange. Okay, this one's tough for me because I love things like astral projection, dream worlds, things like those. But based on what he's gone through, I'm gonna go with strange. I'm gonna go with strange. Tom laughs loudly. Oh, you have no idea. The spirit world is full of strange things. 
cryptic riddles, creepy shadow people, all these rules you have to follow, except sometimes you're not supposed to follow them, but there are good things about it, too. So, why did you bring it up? Well, how would you like to go there? What? Is that even possible? I don't know. Probably. I mean, I learned how to do it, and you're... Y you. I bet you'd pick it up just fine. Don't you have to be a fire user? And didn't you say something about sitting inside a volcano? I think that's how they find it. The volcano is their spiritual center. Maybe that's why it was so tough for me the first time. I don't have the same connection to the volcano that they do. So, what would my center be? Think about it. What's the most important place in the world to you? My center is... Stormholt Lycos? Why would I say Lycos? Why would I say Lycos? I'm so confused! <laughs> I'm just... Stormholt. In this place, it's my home, my heart, my soul. Exactly. Everything the volcano represents for the fire users, that's what this castle is for you. It would take some time, but I think I could teach you to enter the spirit world through your connection to Stormhold. It won't bring Leon back, but it might give you a chance to say goodbye. There may be other spirits there too. So what do you say? You son of a monkey! You mother... Mmm. 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 <sighs> Diamond Edition. Remember that. Diamond Edition. I think I'd prefer to keep the past where it is and let Leon rest. I understand. Dom pulls you in a hug. Then you turn and look out over the wall. Basically, his sad face shows he was trying to uh, do it as something to, to connect with you, and maybe something you could do it together, but I digress. You let out a long, happy sigh as you watch the sun set over the fields of Stormhold. One year later. Oh, snap. Extended edition! It's a cool peaceful morning in Stormhold as you step through the main gates. Jackson trails a step behind. Are you sure you wish me to accompany you, Your Majesty? I could be helping with the festivities. What's this? Stormhold's crown guardian is offering to leave his queen unattended? Come now. A baby could wander the length of Stormhold without getting so much as a stub toe. You've seen to that. Well, I'm glad you're with me anyway. The two of you continue down the grassy slope. Eventually, you come to the royal burial ground, stopping for the newest of the graves. You kneel down, brushing a few stray leaves from the engraved stone plaque at your feet. Here lies Leon, Sterling, trusted advisor, fearless champion, loyal friend decent of the new empress to return his body. Yes, I have high hopes for Leah. So far she's proven to be much kinder ruler than her mother. You hear soft footsteps on the grass behind you turning. You smile as Dom walks over to stand beside you. He smiles back, ruffling your hair. Hey, I just combed that. You want me to look at a fool in front of my subjects? Pretty much always. Tom kisses the messy tangle of your hair. You close your eyes for a moment, breathing in the scent of fresh grass. I can't believe it's already been a year since we defeated Azura. Tell me about it. I feel like I only just recovered from my last victory day's hangover. Well, we better get ready. You better get ready, friend. Val has a barrel of Skullcracker Ale with your name on it. 
Literally, she wrote Jackson's drinking the whole barrel on it in big red letters. God preserve me. Smiling, you lay your palm against Leon's headstone, warming the stone with your hand. I'm glad to have you back, old friend. There's so much I want to say to you. I... Your voice catches in your throat. You bow your head, tears welling in your eyes. Would you like a moment alone with him? If you wouldn't mind. Of course, we'll be nearby if you need us. You nod gratefully, and the others move to the other side of the graveyard. You sit for a long time in stillness, your tears dotting the stone below. Leon. This doesn't feel real. This isn't fair. This peace exists because of you. Our people thrive because you fought for them. You should be here. You you should get to enjoy the rewards of all your efforts. You close your eyes, taking a deep, calming breath. It's hard getting by without you, Leon. It's hard getting by without all of you, Gabriel, Mother. But I think I can do this. The Five Kingdoms are flourishing already. You should have seen Whitlock's face when we received the first shipment of diagrams and blueprints from Dukatora. He wanted to send a crew of engineers to put an elevator in a storm hole. Can you imagine? I guess I just want you to know that it's going to be alright. We're going to be alright. Wherever you are, I know that you're still with me. I'm going to make you proud. You kiss your fingertips and press them against the stone. Standing, you turn away from Leon's grave and move to join the others. Good talk? Yeah, good talk. As you wade through the long grass, you notice Dom's glancing around, an amused expression on his face. What are you grinning about? I just realized this is where we used to spar. Remember that? I remember... Gabriel yelling at us. More kissing than sparring. Kicking your rear. Gabriel yelling at us. I do remember that. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. He was always hollering at you for ripping up your knees. Or telling you to stop acting so chummy with the princess. Honestly, it's just as well for you that... He did interrupt us so often. Oh, and why is that? Because it turned out later, I was a dragon the whole time, so I probably would have wiped the floor up with you. Dom, I used to beat you as a kid, regularly. Wow, I think Queen can arise is starting to get senile in her old age. You and I are very different rec recollections of the events. You know... There is a way to settle this. Careful now, your majesty. Or what? Or I might just have to give you a history lesson. Nearby Jackson rolls his eyes. Here we go again. Go easy this time, you two. You and Dom square off on the hillside. Well, show me what you've got. Or are you too worried I'll bruise that pretty face of yours? Oh, my! so my face is pretty now. Typical. You can only hear what you want to hear. Get ready for a beating. Dom raises his weapon and strikes. Your sticks clack together playfully at first as your feet circle in the grass. Is that all you've got? I could breathe fire on you if you'd prefer. Oh, is that what it takes for you to beat me? Dom lunges, you catch his blow, and find yourself with weapons locked, faces an inch apart. This, this will wipe the smile off your face. Kiss him. You cast aside your weapon, step into Dom's embrace, and bring your lips to his. Mm -mm -mm. You pull apart briefly. What? 
I said, no fair. Dom, would you shut up and kiss me? Dom's weapons falls away as his hands fall. Find your waist and your lips pressed together. A gentle wind blows over the long green grass. The end. Congratulations. At long last, after all your glorious battles, harrowing trials, you've brought peace to the Five Kingdoms. We're honored to have shared this wild, wonderful adventure with you. We hope that you had as much fun as we did. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for playing Crown of the Flame. Pixelberry. So, I gotta say that was a wonderful journey. That's like putting down finally a good book. And, um... I had faith! I had faith in, in uh, their story the whole time. And I kept urging people to really, you know, stick in there. Stick in there. Enjoy the book. And, um... Well, people are starting to come back around. They're starting to actually enjoy Crown of the Flame. So I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. Like I said, in my recaps and like I say in my post and everything, don't put a good book down because it's a little boring at the beginning. You may quickly find out it's one of the best reads you will ever have. And I'm glad that um, I especially could be a part of this journey with uh, with reading this to you all. And I, I'm glad you all enjoyed it. Please do look forward to the Diamond Editions um, of Crown of the Flame. I'll be doing those in the future. No, no current ETA yet. Right now we're doing Freshman Book 2 Diamond Edition. And I'm also going to be wiggling uh, Endless Summer Book 1 Diamond Edition in there as well. So I hope you all did enjoy. Um, please feel free to like and share. If you did or didn't um, enjoy the book, also feel free to let me know in the comment section below. And if you wish, you can always head down to the description. And you can find my social media links down there. You can either follow or message me on them. Or if you want to support my content and myself, it would be greatly appreciated. And until next time, stay well, stay awesome, and I'll catch you all in the next book or video. Peace.